This is a quick video to show you how to add events to a Google Calendar. There are three main ways to do it. The first way to do it is to simply click on the day that you want uh, your event to take place and then you can type in the title and the time and then click create event and you're done. You have your basic time, it shows up on your calendar. If it's an all day thing you can just type it in without a time and it has a different appearance, but it's there. The second way that you can do it is to click this drop down arrow next to create where it says quick add. With this, it is essentially the same idea as clicking on the date, except you can do it for other months. So I could go up and I can do it for September. And let's do September 15th. You can do a test then at 8 a.m. And then you click add and it's there. I'm still in August on this, but if I move up to September, there it is on the 15th at 8 a.m. Now, if you enter a date on the quick ad, and it has already passed. So let's do August 14th, and we'll say that there was a baseball game. What it does when you click add is it will add it to 2015. So it is not here on the 14th. But if I jump ahead to August 2015, it is there on the 14th, as is the 10th from another test that I did. Okay. The third way that you can create an event is to click Create. When you click Create here, it comes up with a new page that has many more options for you to work through. Okay, so you can type in the title of your event, okay, and select the date. Okay, if an event runs for a specific amount of time, such as 6.30 to 7.30, you can leave it as it is. You the start date comes first, as well as start time, to end time and end date. Um, if you need to, you can change the time zone, but that's not something um, I'm not particularly concerned about because everything I do is in the same time zone. If it's an all day event, you can click all day, and it takes away the time because it is all day. Now, say that you're doing something that happens on one day for a specific amount of time and continues on another day for a specific amount of time, maybe a teacher conference or something like that. You can have 6.30 to 7.30 here, and we'll say it's today and tomorrow, but don't change that. What you want to do instead is click repeat. And you can choose how often it repeats, so it repeats daily, it'll be every, every day, not every two days or three days, and so on. It starts today, and I can do it, it ends after two occurrences, or it ends tomorrow, however I want it to be, and then I click done. Okay. As we scroll down, there are more options. Okay. You have event details. Um, if you want to add where it is, that's up to you. It automatically puts in a video call. I don't need a video call, so I'm going to remove it. It tells me which calendar I'm putting it on. So if you have multiple calendars, you can have a specific one. An example of that is I have a class calendar that I make public for my families opposed to an individual calendar so that I know what I'm doing. And a description of whatever your event is. And you can add attachments for when you invite people. You can do a color, you can do reminders. Okay, You can choose the type of reminders, whether you get an email, a pop-up, um, if you get an email, it can be a certain number of days ahead of time, or you can just turn it off altogether by clicking the X here. Because I have this event going on, I'm going to show myself as busy. If I wanted something in my calendar but not as busy, maybe somebody's birthday, I'm, I could click available, and then I'm still available for other things, but I haven't taken that off yet. Okay, Privacy, it's set at default, which means that whatever your calendar settings are, the privacy for this event will be the same. If you have a public calendar, 
then it will be public. If it's private, it's that. Um, the public and private options override that. Okay. When you come up to the right side here, we can add guests, and you can just type in somebody's email address and click add, and it will send them an email, and they have the option to add it or not. Now the cool thing is if you click rooms, um, if your district or if your um, domain administrator has this accessible, you can actually book a room at the same time and say, hey, I'm going to have this meeting or whatever in this room at this time, um, which is sort of neat. Okay. If you come back up to the top, you have a find a time function, which is also kind of cool. So when you add a guest, if they have shared their calendar with you or have the calendar public, you are able to add them and it will say, hey, this person has this time on their calendar already, they're busy, or try this time. Um, I don't expect most people will use that option, although it would be nice if they did, because most people don't have their calendars public, it's something that they want to use on their own. If they do have that open, you can compare up to 20 schedules at once for a bunch of different people, um, but that's up to you and the other people that you're inviting. Whenever you're done with your entry uh, for your event, make sure that you click Save and then your event will be added to your calendar. I have it repeating here, so it showed up at that time every day. Okay, that's it.